So Haram, we're here at ConnectX and we just came out of a panel session yep. about millimeter wave deployment applications. People were really interested in what millimeter wave can do indoors. So maybe if you could just tell us a little bit about what struck you from that conversation and why do you think there's so much interest around using this high band spectrum inside? Well, I think people see the need um, indoors more because the capacity demands are high. You got stadiums, you got convention centers, you got industrial IoT, manufacturing facilities, where there's a need for high capacity and high performance. And I think also the fact that it's much more reliable indoors, given that you don't have the foliage issue and the, and the rain issues and other atmospheric issues. So I think it makes a good fit. And also I think uh, with, with all these industrial IoT networks and enterprise networks where people see a lot of problems, I think we can solve a lot of problems with millimeter wave. Yeah, it's interesting. Industrial IoT, LTE did not prove to be a, a silver bullet for that, yep. but there is significant interest yep. in 5G right. as a solution for in-building. But a lot of these license frequencies, the regulatory machinations are such that it's going to be a long time before that's a turnkey solution. You guys are using 60 gigahertz yep. unlicensed band. Tell me a little bit about how your customers are using the technology. What are some of the use cases here? Yeah, so since we last talked, Sean, uh, we've had now 12 proof of concepts in deployed in the field. And we're finding three major segments that qualify as where the needs are. One is the industrial IoT, where it's manufacturing, warehousing, large buildings which need the connectivity for sensors and industrial applications. We're also seeing uh, some deployments now in the security and video surveillance market where there's a need for providing that high bandwidth connectivity but also security sensing. So we're working with a sensor company that allows you to provide that security solution. And lastly, uh, the fundamental on just connectivity and data offload. And, you know, as you look at these networks, there's a lot of opportunity to connect different kinds of access points, be it Wi-Fi, LT, or even 5G coming forward to provide and then offload the data to the cloud. And I think that uh, seems a really nice use case in, in some of these applications. You know, so I'm curious, and we glanced past this on the panel, but maybe we can talk a little more in depth. If we take like a logistics facility or a yeah. manufacturing facility where you have connected objects that are moving around the floor and then you also have static objects that might be reflective for the propagation off the radio. Yep. There's not really an issue there though, right? You, you still see that very high reliability yeah. that you would need in these mission critical type applications, right? Yeah, so in, the, in one deployment we did in Chicago, we're seeing nine, six nines of availability, which is really high, the customer is really happy. It's extra reliable, and then the other thing we're seeing is the low latency, the 200 microsecond latency. That really helps in some of those applications where they need real-time access. If it's video surveillance or others, you don't have to, you know, the feed is not being weighted on, or the fact that the throughput is not degraded. So a highly reliable, multi-gigabit both ways, as well as getting the six nines availability. So we're really happy with that. Um, there is a reality factor that it won't go through a concrete, uh, you know, slab or it won't be able to, if there's an object completely obstructing it. But yeah, we're getting performance where within the plus minus 45 degrees, you can get a reflection and it works pretty really well. And we've focused our conversation on indoor, but let's, um, you know, let's go outside. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of your customers, they see what they can get inside and they say, well, I want that for the entirety of my campus. Yep. So what's that sort of uh, link from going from inside to outside with so your technology? Uh, outdoors, we can go up to 500 meters. And I think, uh, like you mentioned, the warehouse, person wants now to connect the parking lot. You know, something just right outside there where there's no conduit, no ability to carry a cable of fiber and we can extend that. We're also talking to people like uh, shipping ports where you've got both indoor, outdoor environment, harsh environment, difficult environment, and they need an on-demand solution because sometimes they're about security and surveillance and safety and they've got a crane running on uh, next to the ship and they want a ship to crane solution or they would just want to have a drone that be networked with that environment. So there's that on-demand opportunity as well. But I think indoor, outdoor kind of go hand in hand because in some of those situations, it's a, it's a mixed use environment, right? Uh, we're also seeing multi-dwelling units, you know, where there's, um, you know, fiber comes into a central location and you want to distribute it to 100 MDUs and those are really ripe for our kind of application. And so, so I think outdoor has a, has a bigger opportunity size, but indoor is uh, very much where the demand is initially for us because of the fact our product is here, but secondly, I think it's, it's unique use cases. But outdoor, naturally, you can think about the gamut of things with 5G small cells and 
uh, outdoor lighting and other infrastructure that needs to be connected. And I think in the panel we also talked a little bit about autonomous cars and uh, other things where, you know, if you think about a 5G car that's going to be connected, it still needs to be connected to that small cell that needs backhaul. And so backhaul for those applications is a pretty interesting uh, uh, topic as well. So. Okay, so you got a lot of different ways you can go here. This yep. can be a carrier play, this yep. can be an enterprise play. Yep. So, uh, you know, how are you really telling your story? How are you getting quick? Well, I think, I think well, the way we're describing the solution is it's not just radio technology, it's a complete solution. And it's creating that network on demand or network as a service model where it's like a full solution. So I think it's enabling, it could be a carrier, but also what about the non operator, the warehouse guy, the guy who has a multifamily housing. Uh, complex, how do you enable them to create a network? And I think it's really creating those networks. So I think we've talked a lot about network of networks, right? When you think of this large network, people think about one big carrier going out and deploying the country. I think of about a lot of small guys out there deploying their private networks that all can be connected together if they wanted to, but they could all be independent as well. So I think that ad hoc network is probably a better model because it enables the smaller guys to now actually create a network experience and solve their problem. I think it's all, it's all about solving the customer's problem, and I think that's where we've got to gravitate towards versus hoping for one day there'll be like a gazillion small cells, which I think there will be at some point, but that's a path to get there, right? In the meantime, I think right now is these vertical market application where we see the need is the most, and we see the application the best because they're looking for a simple, easy solution that's deployable. I think with millimeter wave, you get a very small form factor, you get a technology that's high speed reliable, and now you want to network it so it's an easy experience. So what we're really doing is with that ease of deployment with our edge controller and cloud solution to make it very simple for the average person, average networking guy who can actually deploy a network. And, and it's unlicensed, you know, yep. there's a lot of conversation at this show around CBRS. Yep. It's great mid-man spectrum, yep. but it's hard to go bid yep. on, acquire, yes. deploy, and yep. manage shared access to spectrum. That's 60 true. gigahertz. Yeah, we don't have to, and that's the great beauty of 60 gigahertz. At the same time, we have to manage the interference, so that we believe there'll be more 60 gigahertz out there. So we do are doing ways to actively sense the network, make sure that it doesn't interfere with others. So there is that management part of it, but you're right, absolutely, there is that upfront lag of getting the license, getting the approvals, getting through that process and that coordination can be cumbersome, right? At the same time, we think they're complementary in the sense that as CBRS gets deployed, they need backhaul too, and we will provide that. And similarly, with some of our customers I just mentioned, some of them are looking for device-based solutions as well, and so we could add on CBRS or add on other Wi-Fi or 5G solutions to it because we're not really doing access you know, to the handset as yet. And so I think there's a lot of complementary stuff, but at the same time, you're right, to get things going right now, that's a big bottleneck for them. Well, we appreciate you taking the time here at yep. ConnectX to let us know how QuickBit has taken yep. their solution into these verticals. Great. Good talking to you again, Sean. Thanks. Thanks.